here for the first time. Very good. So I'm delighted to welcome back Geshe Tenge's uh, and his commentary in his presentation. So um, La. we'll be taking a break around <coughs> 15 and then concluding at 5. Um, and particularly people, I'm glad to see people that are here that are uh, doing chaplaincy work or interested in uh, doing chaplaincy work because uh, the, eight for, the eight verses will be required for our required reading. So, um, and I think we'll have a, a cut line uh, to conclude. And uh, thank you for being here, Shire, to translate. I've had the lucky um, and auspicious ability to have lunch with Geshla and um, a conversation. So um, I'm very enthusiastic about today's presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> so you can take the flowers off, maybe you can. Maybe on the side. Side. Samala Tashitile. Hello to everybody. Do you hear? Are you able to hear well? Yeah. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> Today, what remains for presentation are those verses remaining from last last week. Now today, I will uh, organize the, the presentation of these remaining verses, perhaps in the four sections. Now these four parts will be first an explanation of thought transformation or mind training and then an indication of the purpose underlying thought transformation and mind training and then how thought transformation and mind transformation occurs, the practice is involved, and then fourth, in exchange with you in a Q&A. <clears throat> now first, I'm going to explain the meaning of the two words, thought transformation, mind training. Mind and consciousness interchangeable here and transformed through a training give our title to the verse mind training thought transformation Now, 
Minds or awarenesses are constructive or destructive. Those constructive mindsets would be increased, developed, and those that are destructive, dispensed with. What is the purpose underlying a thought transformation or mind training but to develop those attitudes that are conducive to contentment and satisfaction and to gradually eliminate those that are pernicious and do us harm. <clears throat> We would develop constructive attitudes that are conducive to contentment and satisfaction and gradually eliminate those that are harmful, the, uh, the objective is to develop contentment and satisfaction through the elimination of the pi primary contributors to dissatisfaction, which are desirous attachment and aversion. There are two forms of contentment and satisfaction. Contented satisfaction of two forms that lasting ultimate contentment and that temporary contentment. There are these two kinds, but it is through first the development of a temporary contentment and satisfaction that finally the lasting ultimate contentment is achieved. <laughs> Now, one would gradually achieve that lasting contentment, the ultimate contentment, through the development of a temporary contentment and satisfaction. One would find no success immediately endeavoring to find the ultimate in contentment. Instead, one in a gradual and progressive manner develops the attitudes that are conducive ultimately to that lasting contentment, a divestment from biased self-interest, toward investment in the well-being of others, and then finally, one achieves a lasting contentment. <clears throat> we speak of graded stages of the path. They are stages of a path that is 
undertaken gradually and progressively. So the known training in stages of the path. For this reason of gradual progression, the Buddha did not begin providing instruction in the equalization and exchange of self with others, but began at the foundation of the presentation of the four truths of the noble ones, and from there gradually and progressively developed the teaching. Developed the teaching in such a way that it is fitted to and suited to the ability and capability of each individual. Presently, we are concerned with a Mahayana training, the mind training, but foregoing necessarily are the trainings in the Dharma of lesser scope and middling scope, consistent with the gradual progression in the stages of the path of that very tradition. <clears throat> so then the topic of the third section, how one engages in thought transformation, mind training. The presentation of stages of the path suit a person's capabilities and circumstances in just the way when a patient visits, visits a physician and the physician counseling on diet will observe their health and advise that they no longer eat meat and when their condition changes then that they may again eat meat in just this way based upon the circumstances of the patient, of the individual, counsel is suited and adjusted to them. And such is the gradual progressiveness of the stages of the path. <clears throat> Pena 
a progression through thought transformation, mind training, resembles education that is progressive. A person enters primary school and begins learning the alphabet in English, A, B, C, D, and gradually develops and progresses in the precious garland. It is said that just as a grammarian begins with instruction in the fundamentals and progresses, so too are the teachings of the Buddha progressive. That is, a grammarian begins learning vowels and consonants and then more elaborate rules of grammar. It is a progressive education. So too is thought transformation progressive. The progression in the stages of the path begin with developing the, the repulsion toward cyclic existence, to be repelled by it is the beginning of the progression of thought transformation. But how does one develop the awareness that cyclic existence is repellent and then annul it? One does so following the three principal aspects of the path composed by Jetsongkapa, by recognizing the rarity of the human rebirth the shortage of time available to one during it, the difficulty of coming by it. And this way. And the momentariness <clears throat> of the human life. Now that, uh, that awareness of the repellent nature of the of cyclic existence and and the present life is grounded in in awareness of the difficulty of achieving that life, and then the momentariness of that life, and the imminence of death. Chiba <laughs> Uh, uh, the, the, the interpreter re revises uh, 
himself the awareness of the repellence of cyclic existence should be uh, uh, deleted and uh, replaced with uh, preoccupation with the present life. One should reduce their preoccupation and investment in the present life. Now, this is achieved through the end of correction. This is achieved through three sections concerning death itself. That death is certain, the first section. That the time that death will occur is unknown. Yet that at the moment of death, the dharma alone will be of any benefit. Now, we are well aware of the inevitability of death. But what seldom occurs to us is that the moment of death itself is unknown to us. And it is that uncertainty of death is unknown to us, as it is a cause, the momentariness of life is caused by karma and the mental afflictions. Now, it doesn't occur to us to reflect on the uncertainty of the time of death, and when we seldom reflect on the uncertainty of time of death, we feel no urgency or receptivity to the dharma. Our pains and difficulties are caused by our inability to acknowledge reality as it is, momentariness of life, and the uncertainty of the time of death are descriptive of reality as it is. But we inevitably choose to imagine that death will not come tomorrow, nor the next day, nor the next. And self-deluded in this way, we prevent ourselves from achieving anything in the way of dharma. But with the acknowledgement of the uncertainty of the time of death, the natural byproduct of that very acknowledgement is a realization of contentment.
Ordinarily, even then, the consideration of the uncertainty of the time of death, this is itself divided into three relevant sections, but I won't go into each of those. But enough to mention that uh, death depends on conditions that may come about and cause it. And that in that event, there's no postponing or delaying the event of death. It cannot be that one comes to the moment when one will die and that then one postpones it a bit more. That does not happen. <laughs> Logic now, when one knows well that they will die the following day, no person goes about making plans for the coming year. One who has been diagnosed last night with a one day left for them to live doesn't make plans for the following month. In the same way, Acknowledging the, recognizing the uncertainty of the time of death, one does not get caught up in investment in the present life. What <laughs> Now, we might not be able to entirely relinquish our infatuation with the present life, but we might reduce it. Reduce it in such a way that there is an opening for consideration of a future life. The <laughs> With that awareness of a life to come, this life to come to, a preoccupation with it, must be reduced. So, Chetong Kapas indicates in the three principal aspects of the path, you will, by contemplating the pitfalls of cyclic existence, reduce your preoccupation with cyclic existence. Nizan <laughs> In the Buddha Dharma, we speak of beginningless births and samsara without beginning. In the time of beginningless births and samsara without beginning, we have been involved in innumerable negative karmas, negative activities. Now, 
the negative karmas remain dor dormant, latent in the mind. Those dormant latencies of negative karmas must be experienced in their consequences. And the consequence of negative karmas, dormant in the mind, is inevitable pain and suffering. Now in the present life, karmas for which one is responsible, if they are left unconfessed and unpurified, then their consequence, pain and suffering, will inevitably be experienced. We speak of the experiencer of karmas, who necessarily experiences those karmas. But when one confesses to negative karmas for which one is responsible and confesses them, confesses them and purifies them, then one hasn't got to experience the pain that is their result. <laughs> Among negative karmas, that there are among karmas, positive karmas, and negative karmas. Among the negative karmas, there are five that are known as heinous karmas. They are heinous for their, and known as, karmic actions of immediate retribution, meaning that when one is responsible for one of these heinous acts, one is plunged immediately into the hell realm. No intermediate stage intervenes. They are patricide, matricide, the murder of an arhat, the harm of a tatagata with malicious intent and dividing the sangha. Today, in the Tikpati, and the Japi Kapsola, Nipo Tobi, Samiko, and the Japan China, and the Tikpakandikina, and then Daya Yores. These heinous crimes, too, though confessed to, may be purified. They are confessed to and then purified through the application of the antidote powers. The heinous act, the negative karma, is purified where the four antidote powers are all present. The four antidote powers that would be present for the purification of any karma are the antidote power of the support, the antidote power of remorse, the antidote power of applying the antidotes, and the antidote power of future restraint. Where the four are present, any karma may be eliminated. Tindy in the 
But if I were to uh, describe each of the antidote powers, we wouldn't have time. Mm. In any case, one would avert one's ill fortune of experience of hell realms by the force of their non-virtues, one would confess and purify the karmas. But that alone to avoid birth into hell is insufficient. One mustn't be born into cyclic existence at all. But to avoid birth again into cyclic existence will only occur when the grave pitfalls of cyclicity in samsara are recognized, where they go unrecognized, one does not do what is necessary to achieve liberation from samsara. Then we are all wandering samsaric beings. Now we who are wandering samsaric beings would liberate ourselves from samsara. But mere liberation from samsara too is insufficient for our aim. We must furthermore invest ourselves in the well-being of others. It is insufficient to merely liberate ourselves from that pernicious influence of mental afflictions. We must be invested in the welfare of others in addition. <clears throat> Thus, we have arrived at the mentality of the Mahayanas concerned with the thought transformation of the Mahayana. So then now I'll make an effort to complete the remaining verses of the eight verses of mind training. Now, even though I presented the early verses of mind training, I will recite them now again by thinking of all sentient beings as more precious than a wish fulfilling jewel. For accomplishing the highest aim, I will always hold them dear. Whenever I'm in the company of others, I will regard myself as the lowest among all, and from the depths of my heart, cherish others as supreme. <laughs> ตัดเตตอนตัดเตการิซงกุยอริสชิวายีนาอันนี้ราญีเงินเบเซมเจนนัมส์ราญีเงินเบเซมเจนนัมส์ซงกุยอันนี้จิกเซมเจจอปะ
and on to the third verse, in my every action I will watch my mind and the moment destructive emotions arise I will confront them strongly and avert them since they will hurt both me and others. And then the fourth line here, whenever I see ill-natured beings or those overwhelmed by heavy deeds or suffering, I will cherish them as something rare, as though I had found a priceless treasure. Whenever I see ill-natured beings, ill-natured beings are those whose behavior is ill-considered, whose behavior is violent, volatile. Those encountering those individuals when one has met with those individuals i see ill-natured beings i guess you or those overwhelmed by heavy deeds or suffering he makes the the comparison of such individuals to precious minds something rare a precious mind something the hard hard to come by one imagines meeting such ill-natured natured beings as being an encounter with priceless treasure. So I will cherish them as something rare, as though I'd found a priceless treasure. Uh, <coughs> And they call a pendo chair, Now, we ordinary beings, when we encounter a person, a being of this kind, who is violent, who in, is engaged in negative activities, violence, negative activities. We don't think to ourselves, ah, here is a priceless treasure. We flee. But this is not the way of the Bodhisattva. The Bodhisattva comes upon such an ill-natured being engaged in the most atrocious acts, and then recognizes in them their preciousness and rarity, and is invested at that moment in assisting them in their welfare. Uh, Tala, Tala Senani, Kishi Loretomba Tala, and then Kaza She Paro Poshigi, and then Taduta, and then she dance and Tendigi Wangi, and then Jeshi Tawata, and then Maji Pati Cheson Sen and Kora Tapa Lasu, but Mripa Mumboti, Cheva in a young, and Kishi Loretomba Rangi, and yet in a chime sen a tendichi in pa, Kolane Kala Kurta. Now I will read what follows. Whenever someone out of envy does me wrong by attacking or belittling me, I will take defeat upon myself and give the victory to others. Whenever someone out of envy does me, me gives you long ritangba, wrong by attacking or belittling, belittling, belittling me, gives you long ritangba. When they attack or belittle, when they make accusations, the one isn't responsible for the action. I will take the defeat upon myself without denying responsibility. I will admit responsibility. 
and allow others to experience the victory. Uh, now there's a story of Keshe Langri Tangba teaching the Dharma. And as he was teaching in public the Dharma, a woman came beside him carrying an infant and said, this is your child. Gishilangri Tamba was an ordained an ordained person and had no children at all. The woman came and, it, and claimed he was the child's father. Langri Tamba did not respond to the effect that he was not, but adopted the child and cared for the child for two years. <coughs> ตาตาฮะกูมาซ้อนเตยอันนี้ราจิงละการิเจเวเตพูดดิญาเนรอพูดญาเนถ้าชรากพูดเรลาบระวะถ้าคราวกพูดอยู่นะคราวทาบะ
now that Langri Tangba composed the eight verses of mind training based upon experience, this account enforces this, that this is composed by a person from their very experience. <clears throat> ขันละตากิเพนตาเปเรวะเจบะขันชิเกชินเดเมริกโนจินนองเยเนตันปะตะบะโชสขันละอืมขันซาขันติจินนาเซขันนาสนะขันซาสุยินนันตะบะโคโ
चरसे शांजुक सेंबे के न्याने खांडे की ना या नामी से ना तो ड्रेबल आ रहा मैं पाच लेल आ रहा मैं पाच कोई और है मैं पैना लेल आ रहा योशन ने शेम बाची के थोड़ा दिखा गया हमारे से राना या ने रेवाच जाती हो रहा इसे शांजुक सेंबे के ने शावा खांडे की शेवा ही ना शेम बाची के थोड़ा इंबा has no interest in personal reward or return. Where there is any interest in reward and return personally, that action, whatever it is, will not be solely for the welfare of another, but will be tainted by self-interest. No such self-interest in the bodhisattva who has no interest in return or reward. ดอนนโมสัมตุกะเชนนโมทังยอตังกะดินนโมสัมตุกะดอนนโมทังตะนิโมทังเสลุวิดาดอนนโมทังจุปะยิเพนเดมานะกุลังบุมายโนตตงะ
<clears throat> to offer all of one's roots of virtue to others and to take upon oneself all the pains and hurts of others, one's mothers, is not an activity that is easily understood or performed by a, an ordinary person. It is an inconceivably courageous activity. And it is so inconceivably courageous that the prospect of it to an ordinary person will be intimidating. One will therefore secretly take upon oneself all their hurt and suffering. The, the hidden is a mode in Tibet for differentiating between those who would be receptive to a form of practice and those who are not. To willy nilly present all instruction is unwise and one distinguishes and recognizes some as suitable and others as not. Shantideva in the way of the Bodhisattva, the Bodhichari Avatara, the secretly I equally equalize and exchange self and others. The equalization and exchange of self and others is a practice of an adept. It isn't one easily known. It is arrived at progressively and is very refined. Even among bodhisattvas, it is a practice of a most adept bodhisattva of the keenest intelligence. And then will we take a break here? There's some snacks in the kitchen, like so, uh, so around uh, three forty, something like that. And uh, when we reconvene, we could have the remaining verse and then and then the q a too if you like if you like okay okay wonderful and then there's some snacks so no yes kitchen oh that's good and then the gong will ring we'll let you know yeah all right very good
Zingadu. Pierre. Now the final verse here. I will learn to keep all these practices untainted by thoughts of the eight worldly concerns. May I recognize all things as like illusions and without attachment gain freedom from bondage. <clears throat> In some, some uh, editions, it is, may I recognize phenomena as like illusions and others, all phenomena. In some things, in some all things. Hmm? I will learn to keep all these practices untainted by thoughts of the eight worldly concerns. These practices are those foregoing practices described above. I will learn to keep them untainted by thoughts of the eight worldly concerns. The eight worldly concerns defile the practices. The practice then would be to prevent such concerns from defiling or staining or tainting the practices. <clears throat> The eight worldly concerns themselves are eight, they're enumerated. An ordinary worldly being is indicated here in eight worldly concerns. They are the concerns of that ordinary sort of person. Now the first two of these concerns common to ordinary individuals is a preoccupation with Gain and loss. When something is gained, one is gratified. When something is lost, one is disheartened. This is the ordinary way of people. And the third and the fourth are gratification when one is content and disheartenment when one is discontented. And ordinary people are concerned for their status. And so fame they find gratifying. In ill fame, infamy, dissatisfactory. <coughs> Uh, and, and ordinary beings are concerned with praise, gratified to be praised, and 
dissatisfied when critiqued. Now these ordinary concerns would defile practices if a person were preoccupied with them. That a person not be preoccupied with these is the meaning of the line. Now, whatever the, the activity, whatever the dharma, the practice of the dharma that might be undertaken, if it were motivated by any such concern, it would not ultimately be consistent with the dharma. These eight worldly concerns are concerns of a person invested in the present life. A mere preoccupation with the present life is not consistent with the Dharma. The Dharma necessarily begins with an interest in life to come, an investment in that. So worldly concerns preoccupied with this life are not conducive to the Dharma. Hmm. Now, would be seen as no different from the other. One would be indifferent to praise. And likewise, indifferent to critique. The tendency is to be overly gratified when praised. But the practice is to, when praised, recognize, yet there are others who would critique me. And then when one is critiqued, one mustn't be disheartened. One can nevertheless recall, yet there are those who would praise me. One wouldn't have this concern to always be praised and never be critiqued, motivate them. Rather, one would see them as equal, be balanced, and experience life as of a single flavor without a preoccupation with such a worldly concern as whether one is praised or not. Neither receiving praise or being critiqued should be cause for any overreaction. When praised, one shouldn't be overly glad. When critiqued, one shouldn't be overly disheartened. When praised, one should recognize tomorrow one may well critique me. When today one is critiqued, one wouldn't be disheartened but recognized. Yet again later, I may well be praised. One shouldn't, it isn't cause, praise, or critique for any overreaction at all. 
Kering topo ndat mebu wape, jak pe koto ndat kamma jela ndat mebu wate ndi topo ji yowa yina yang, ke cha ti si yeni, jik tawo to tsamma si ta ti ndi tsik chung jong jela te ni, sanyi ko wong ta sin te a ti ndi yung gres, ane sanyi ko la te na kering topo na sanyi ta, kering ta na sanyi topo, ta nye la ngeta mewa yinza, ni ti jik nyambo ta ya ti kechi mewa yores. The event depends upon others. The situation is changing such that who is a friend at present, if they were to speak in a critical way of you, might well become an adversary tomorrow. And the adversary today, if they were to later speak kindly of you, might well become your friend. As this distinction of friend and adversary is itself unstable, so too the praise and the critique are changing. Today, in the data that the data that the data main current jikte chuti lagun dawas jikte pala jita namjuni yung teya chire kali kapo te yores mepa soya ina ya khan tup tup ge ne yung do taya te beton cheko ya kechi mores. Now they're called the eight worldly concerns because they are common. Uh, they are evident. They aren't easily changed, but should one make the greatest effort that they can to reduce the degree to which one is invested in them, that is recommended here. <laughs> And the chosen dog your maris that take Tikpa Chambo Cho in a dog it do and make Harry in a Zamba Chachung Gongi that Cho Chick Tommy that song each other your ass. Now in the Mahayana Dharma, what is the Mahayana Dharma wouldn't be Mahayana Dharma, wouldn't be Dharma at all if it were defiled by, contaminated by such. Consideration such concerns as these eight worldly concerns. That the old Lani Chona Juma Shipilo, Shemi Chuma later shows that Chona Juma Shipilo, Chonam said, Tatanga, so Chuchi, say, Chu Tipus, say, your Maris, Chonam said to Tamjila and Chola again, eh, Chikap Chior has the invite Chonam said to Tamji, you say Tamjila and Chose, Lago Yores, Invaiza. Now, what follows? May I recognize all things as like illusions and without attachment gain freedom from bondage. May I recognize all things as illusions. All things is here meant all inclusive, not with any particularity here, but all that there is, all phenomena, all inclusive. May I recognize all phenomena, all inclusive, as like illusions. Choose love do any Quran la ta yang do ni yores. Ta yang do china, yotse tamjela, chu la pikap ki yores. And ta tobi on the china, chu la tung as a nam jugene, chu chi seatela, tela kobe kap ki yores. Jedan panna lamna. Copy chu lap your ass, copy killer chu. Panma, Panma Sena, Rangi Moon Zimba. The chu nomadic harris and Nangatsu Tatanam chu seadi, Rangi Moon Zimba lap, Jera Chimala Mamadova, Telia, Zintopa. And the Kovala name Topa, Telia, and Zintopa. Tendelani, Jeda Chu Telacoco res. Tata chu seadi, Jeda, you see Tamjilani chu squares. Now all things here are all dharmas. May I recognize all dharmas as like illusions. The dharma is glossed differently in different contexts. There is a context in which its meaning is the narrowed meaning of the dharma that is the apprehension of the character of a thing particularly the character of what causes distress in 
cyclic existence and the means for extricating oneself from it, that being the spiritual dharma. The dharma in wider gloss is inclusive of all phenomena. Both are meanings, valences of dharma. ตัวละตาตาเตขาริตตากูเรสนะอันนี้จุมะตาบจิตตากูเรสจุมะสิขาริสงโกยอร์ชิวายินะอันนี้จุมะตาตาลังตัวเสียจิยอร์เรสเต
However, in actuality, no phenomenon is independent and autonomous from causes and conditions which allow for it. This invariably true of all phenomena. Recognizing phenomena in this way as dependent upon the cause and the condition that allow for it, our view of them is widened. Our view is widened when we consider encountering an anger, angry person that they are, though apparently always angry, as they are now, in actuality, though they appear ang angry, they haven't been angry continuously from birth. They aren't constantly angry. And recognizing this, our view of them is widened again. Uh, now I, uh, now I believe I've, I've already mentioned this, that when we are hit by another with a stick and we immediately retaliate against the person, it's attributing responsibility not to the stick but to the one that we assume is responsible, the person who wielded it. But so it is with a person who is angry. We do not respond to the angry person, but recognize that they are under the influence of mental afflictions, that they are moved by, powerlessly, moved by ignorance, unawareness, and it is the mental afflictions that are responsible. Seeing the situation so, our, widen, our, our view of them is again widened. When, for instance, when a dog is hit by a stick, or, or someone throws a stone at a dog, perhaps a little bit more wisely than is our immediate response, the dog will go after the stone or the stick. Now, we, when we're hit by a person with a stone or a stick, immediately leap upon the person as responsible. That which is responsible, though, for the violence of the, of the person is the mental afflictions and attributing responsibility where responsibility lies. One's view of the situation is widened. <laughs> Tendere se adani, kemata voci, 
to see phenomena as illusory, to involve Pratityat Samutpada, dependent origination, in our account for phenomena, to recognize that any phenomenon arises from a collection of causes and conditions, not from one sole cause or condition, allows for a widened, again, view of a situation, the view of pratityat samutpada, dependent origination, that phenomena do not arise from a single sole cause and condition, but are dependent upon many causes and conditions, enlarges our view. And when our view is enlarged, we are less distressed in events. There is less pain that we feel at, in such an event by virtue of the widened view that we have of events. So the advantage to being able to distinguish between appearances and the mode of subsistence of any phenomenon, when we meet with a person who harms us, who is angry, we then see them in a narrowed light as always responsible for, for such a thing, as always angry. We narrow the actuality of events and the person in such a way that we see narrowly only their faults. And when we see in a narrow light another, we ourselves become oppressed and constricted and experience the hardship of such a claustrophobic view of another. But when one recognizes here in this person, they're responsible for this just now, they're angry just now, but they haven't been continuously this way. They aren't and haven't been this way since birth. In fact, they have benefited me in this way. They are responsible for these many other good things. When one widens one's view, and recognizes this person isn't merely responsible for just this problematic action, but has done all sorts of good elsewhere, may later again do good for another, then our distress is lessened by the wider view that we have of them. <laughs> Kurangimonyopachitane, <laughs> Imagine events 
to be. We imagine events arise from a soul cause and soul condition and aren't aware, do not recognize the many causes and conditions involved in the arising of a given event. And when we have such an outlook, we become enmeshed in cyclic existence over again and again by the force of desirous attachment and aversion that follows from the narrow view. But to be able to distinguish between an appearance and the actual mode of a phenomena is to make possible the great hope to be liberated from the bondage of remaining ensnared in a narrow view that causes for some cycling. ตันโดตุนิชวายนานิงาจอจิเนปะคันติจีนายานิจิอัมเปนางาดอจาเชตุนคงโตงาจาคันติจีนายายงสะซาวะติอะนิรานซาเชมบุรานซาเชมบุน
modicum of a solution to the physical pain involved to be found through the pursuit of development of physical technologies for alleviating physical pain. But the origins of mental pain, their origins in the pathology of self-love and grasping at the ewheel self are addressed through the transformative practices of mind training involving meditations on love and the other practices of thought transformation. For this reason, then, developing an affectionate love for others is necessary for any of the outward developments in technology that would allevi alleviate pain. The development of loving affection is necessary for those to be employed toward the alleviation of pain. It might be that technologies are developed, but where there's an absence of con consideration and love for others, they won't be employed to the benefit of others. So it is the importance of striving for peace and affectionate love among all in the world. And in many cases, it is from one's own unawareness, from one's own inability to be content with what they have, that they make for themselves great pains. Now, I, I'm going to tell a story, and perhaps you've, you've heard it already. ま、ジュディの地まで、スポ。あの、チランペン、ど、カルポ。あの、チクテンでど、あの、ナペンナポ。あの、ナチポンメンド。チラン、キバラス。テンでラバレス。テンドディ、あの、ナ、ダダディ
Tambo, ま、<笑><笑> ペギオレで、いや、ゲルシソンだ。じゃ。ラ。いや、ゲルシソンだ。で、ペナで、あの、で、マブジャで、あの、シンキョデヨロワ。ヨワロワ。サンマスシンキョデヨロワ。うん、
Candes Kergere, Tora Tama de Ora Toma de Lala Candy Chere. No, no. Ah, the Kerino Lacaris, Riven and Yaman Candis Chigre, Tenemichi, Tora Tankin, Chick Chene Yaman Garechigo. The Tora Tankin Leva Yina Tora Toma de Kerala, Ketal and Tora ขัดชีวิตสลาวายนะอันนี้เป็นอย่างปุ๋ยสุขรังอัตราตัวเท่าไหร่อันนี้คิดว่ามารังตัวตัวไอ้ที่สิเชื่อโยสิกฤติยิน
And so it seems like you have to really be able to know what you can handle and, and practice with. And so how do you, um, how do you decide which situations to put yourself in that you're capable of transforming it as opposed to putting yourself in a situation where you just feel overwhelmed with anger? ペレ。あにて、せでかんですジョグレ。せ、せ。せでかんですジョグレ。ペナ。ま、だがんスパルドポタンヨン。な。オーツレ。ユネンデレ。ゲナ。あにアブソドゥトプソ、アブソドゥ
and Tanyong's gong kapodu. Ta and it Nesu Dindin Rabo Jumna Yang Tanyong gong gap tube nuba Gandris fell to gire on the devo deroa. Thank you for the this particular question, which is so useful. And the other things え、ね、たまたたたんて。とんがてりぱい、よたっちゃちゃ、たんとんがてたんとんやちゃにんよんちゅうがれするわ。たてんてきてんてびかぶそら、あの、そそげ、たたんて。たんがつおげちこわせや
so we meet again with the urgent importance of developing affectionate love. For we find that in the paucity of affectionate love, war breaks out and nation states come into conflict. They do so out of that paucity, that shortage of of affectionate love for others. They do so out of biased self-interest inevitably. And from that biased self-interest comes warfare. And so we have for us reason to develop our own affectionate love first within our family and then in wider areas so that eventually there won't be the shortage, the paucity of that affectionate love that causes war to break out in the world. So then again, the urgency of practicing affectionate love and beginning in one's home. Thank you for your teaching, Geshe-la. Um, On the sixth verse, when even when I have helped some, even when someone I have helped or in whom I have placed great hopes mistreats me very unjustly. Um, now I understand that any benevolent act, any any positive act we do towards another should be done with complete unconditionality. But the fact is that when we do do something nice for someone and we know that they have benefited, they feel better, it's been had a positive effect, we do indeed feel better. I mean, it, it does, you know, it makes us feel better. Even in, it, I'm thinking of a quote I heard once from the Dalai Lama, if you want to be happy, practice compassion. If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. So practicing compassion makes us happy. And there's nothing, um, what, what, what should, should we not be gratified by that? I mean, that isn't conditionality though, is it? Just because we feel good that we have done a positive act. Gap Gyu Yoma Res, and a Sung Soma Yena Yang Cheta Nasu and a Ningze Jamse Penani Mishimbala Pento Chip Chipe Cup Delaya and a Parobo Mila and a Pento Chene Soso Gator Rangsingi Gator Labidwa Nigi me de la ni pinto che son sane. Any rangsingi and gagrewa, sosugi, pinto che ke. Any rangsingi gagrewa, 
Mission Shela pendo chene soso techi lena de boga mare semba tona le ni soso ge chena kimba tawa te lamdo sun ta rowa rowa ani chena tona ta kato le wa ina an dik te yore sina ya chura kimba tong du me ko kimba ta ne ma pa ko ni te la ni chik kimba ta wo lemba kimbo la wa ta na chik kimba chik chung da wo pe sha ya na chu chik ko ten de ne ko ten de Thank you for the good question. And and should you assist another, benefit another, and then naturally respond yourself positively with a feeling of con satisfaction and gratification that hasn't got to be a reflection of conditionality or transactionality in, the, in that assistance you gave to them. It is just as well a reflection of your instantiation, enactment of the practice of generosity itself as it is to be. It is a reflection of, of a practice as it would be. You might not think to avoid conditionality or transactionality. You might not think in those terms, but natively, spontaneously assist another and be gratified to assist another. And that would be a fine reflection of the measure of your enactment of a spiritual practice in and of generosity. In Bainta Zanta Shendo Zana, Rando Shalla Dupse at the Chirang Tatas Taran Reyes Shendo, a shop chamber to even a Rondo de Coranji, young de Grespa. Can the money by the Kulalani calling a party pinto chenaco, Mopa, Magic Chair, Revatam Chevana, and Totavanaji. They invite the Mokova Chen Shendo, Bashi Chishawa in a Chiron, a Techi, Tagilip, Sunguza, Tinta. The, the, the intention to benefit another naturally has as a byproduct one's own contentment. One finds one's own well being through naturally being, of well -be being a contributor to the well being of others. It is said to be this way, different from transactionality, where you anticipate your later reward and are only conditionally generous with a view to your later reward. But naturally what occurs is, with an investment in the well-being of others, one oneself is benefited. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Ina she ya ba thor ra chipu cha chimbo se ya tin dega yo mare ma to chena shunjuk sembala rang ke thonda to ya ke lot yo res sanji la rang ke rondo to ya ke lot chena yo res ina ra cho che ke yo mare res cho te che che ke yo res ina cho she na chi ondu rang ke thonda te ndop do yo res na the 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 bodhisattva's conduct is not the sacrifice of one's own well-being and discarding any notion of personal well-being. It is investment in the well-being of others and the view, too, that through that investment in the welfare of others, one's own ultimate well-being, Buddhahood, is assured. That is the outlook of the Bodhisattva. It invites misinterpretation that the Bodhisattva dispenses altogether with any personal objective. But the personal, the realization of the personal objective follows from the investment in the welfare of others. Shanju Sempati to Semketu and Shanju. Tongue chitola, and Rani San Chico in Duk, some sample, not the Shanju Sambala, your ass. The Randon, Shinje Tondo, Rani San Chico, some sample lotte, Rando Tony, the Rani Sanje Compotopco, some sample lotte, Rando Tony Lochado, res. In the Inza, take a shelly tongue with your mother, round so cheer your marina, Shinje Tondo, round. And Sanje Compotopco, some sample, Shanju Sambala, your ass. The Inba Inza, the Niki Nam Juni. In the mind of a bodhisattva is the mind of awakening itself that I will achieve Buddhahood in order to consummate the welfare of the other. That is, the bodhisattva in the development of the mind of awakening bodhicitta has established the realization of Buddhahood as their means to finally bringing about the well-being of others. And so it isn't that the Bodhisattva has no objective that is a personal realization, but that the personal realization of Buddhahood is contributor to the ultimate assistance and ensuring of the welfare of others. Yani <laughs> Chuzo <laughs> Now, now then uh, we've completed at about the time uh, we would uh, wrap up and um, I wish to thank all of you uh, for attending uh, for engaging in this exchange of the Buddha Dharma Regardless of the accuracy of my presentation on the eight verses of mind training, your willing interest, your presence is truly appreciated. So thank you very much. And that 
Lion's Roar and Lama Jimba have invited me now several times, this being the third time for that too. I am very grateful. And then we have in our exchange now, instruct, through instruction in the Dharma and listening to the Dharma, accumulated virtue that we might direct toward bringing an end to the violent conflict in the world and the famine and the pain in the world. Then with intensity, we might direct our roots of virtue toward these ends in our closing prayers. To name now, to Allah, and kicking around the Uchira Pento da Yobaina, and the Jack of a Chiggins, and the Capsu Chiranzo Trevat Kayobaina Tomaina, and the Lent Timela Matu being around Kanto to Chiggins, in the Dream to Wat to lay up a chumina, and consensuous. Now we might again in the future uh, cover the material again. Uh, you might, if your questions weren't answered well the first time around, pose them to me again, and I might again uh, respond, respond to the best of my ability. Uh, Thank you. Oh, my God.